The Afghans who supported the United States all risked their lives to do so. But some jobs were more dangerous than others. Wazir's job was one of the most dangerous jobs you could possibly do in service to the United States. He was serving openly in a public space carrying a rifle for the United States of America and searching people to stop Taliban suicide bombers from taking out Americans. I was newly assigned to Bagram Airfield as part of the Base Defense Force when I met Wazir. My job is uh, uh, the, the security and the uh, guard. I look for bad people, for Taliban. This was July 2011, and I was a response force leader with the 455th Expeditionary Security Forces Squadron defending Bagram Airfield from enemy attack on the ground. I got to know Wazir over the course of, of those months because we would get moved around and posted to different posts and patrols. Really, I came to rely on Wazir for uh, who to trust, who not to trust, patterns of life, what was normal, what was out of the ordinary. We had 107 millimeter rockets impact just outside the perimeter, pretty close to our position. This was my second rocket attack. I was very new to that experience. And I don't remember diving for cover behind the sandbags. I didn't feel him hit the deck, and so I turn and look up, and Wazir is standing on top of the sandbags and has my binoculars in his hand uh, looking for a launch position. And I went, ah, this is someone I should learn from. I can't estimate how many lives Wazir saved through the knowledge that he imparted to Americans. I was not the only guy to whom Wazir was the most trusted Afghan who worked with us. He became sort of my lifeline, my path of information, my mentor in, you know, the things that would keep you alive out there. Leaving Afghanistan was bittersweet. Obviously it was really hard work there and it was difficult being away from my family and my life here in the U.S., but I I felt like what I was doing there was the most important thing I'd ever gotten to be a part of. It's very hard for me. It's a goodbye. It's a give me some America uh, flag. I'm every day, I'm seeing the flag I put into my door. Uh, this is my house. I've concluded that it's time to end America's longest war. It's time for American troops to come home. America is uh, leaving. I'm scary. Uh, I'm scary. I understand Taliban maybe come back to my village is a problem for me. I had to sort of gird myself for bad news. I finally called his phone a few times and then one night, end of July, he picked up and uh, immediately, uh, you know, I said, is this, is this Wazir Ghul? He said, yes. And I said, it's Sam Lerman. 
he said, Sergeant Lerman? <laughs> and uh, I don't know, within an hour, it was back to like, it was 2011 again. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so glad I found Sam. I talk to again, call him every, every day. He's calling me. I'm so happy. My our family is so glad. As things got worse over the following days, I was following the position of Taliban forces and I saw the pace of movement and I said, look, I, I called Wazir and said, you need to get out of your house. You need to go to Kabul. Do you have a place to stay in Kabul? And he said, yes. So he got his family and went to Kabul. He was sending me photos of every document that he had. I spent several days um, putting together his SIV application, which I submitted at uh, about the same time that uh, Kabul fell. I said, you know, go to the airport, you're an SIV applicant, you know, the airlift had begun and I would tell Wazir what to say and what documents to hold up and what to show to try to get in. But over the course of the next week and a half, Wazir went with his family, what, three, four times? Including one time that was over 30 hours of trying to get into the airport amid gunfire, confusion, crushes of crowds, rolling Taliban checkpoints searching for collaborators. It was getting worse and worse every single time. Every time Wizard was pushed back, at one point he was struck with a rifle by an American service member as he tried to get into the North Gate. I bring in my family. I come to airports. Uh, too many people. And I come to, every people come to airports. My wife, my all case is too scary. Uh, they say maybe you you go. Uh, problem first for you. Maybe I'm stay here for some different village, some different from. You go. It's too hard for me uh, because of my family is up there. I come here. It's too hard for me. I get a call from a good friend of mine who's an agent with the Diplomatic Security Service, um, who I asked for help at the beginning of this and said he didn't think he knew anybody that could do anything. And he calls me frantic and says, I think I've got someone who can help. I was going through a one-year tour in Kabul as part of the security team there. Our job is to protect the people, um, installations and information or embassies and diplomatic posts around the world. We were locating people every day, every night, so that there was a real possibility we could find this person that he was looking for. Um, but he had to get inside the gate. That was the hard part. That was the imperative. Outside the gate, outside the airport, we could, that was beyond our control. Justin told me the layout on the ground uh, at Abbey Gate and stressed many, many times, no promises, because it was an extraordinarily difficult situation. He gave me a description of what Wazir would have to do, that he would have to get through or around the Taliban checkpoints that ringed the exterior of the gate, would have to get into this sewage ditch filled with thousands of people. He would have to fight his way through this crowd to get close enough to where he could link up with Justin. We had worked out a link-up procedure that I thought would, would help. I would lose the helmet, wear a baseball cap, and he was given my name. He used to yell at Justin when he saw me. And if there was still battery in the cell phone to show an American flag. Uh, Sam called me about uh, his friends. Wazir, I called him 
and told him that you are there and he, you are looking for him and he is going to look for you. Send me flag, flag, and my phone is up to WhatsApp me. Say shoot to my friend. His name is uh, Justin. You uh, go to Abbey Gates. To Abbey Gate, you call Justin. Justin. There's a lot of people, many, many people. Keep yelling, Justin, Justin. DSS, DSS. I shoot for everything in the flag. Justin, Justin, Justin. Uh, you just and say no. I I don't just I no just. <laughs> Come over, call him just and just too many American people. I'm scared to hear American people. Everything is here. He's not talking to me. I uh, 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 call him uh, Justin, Justin. Neither one of them could find each other for some time. So Wazir is fighting his way through this crowd in the water. And I'm trying, going back and forth between Justin and Wazir via phone and WhatsApp, trying to get them onto each other's location. I'm uh, calling uh, maybe long time, maybe for him, one hour. I think it's maybe one hour. There's many, many people in the water. I shoot a flag to Justin, say, yeah, what's your name? I told him my name is Wazir Gul. He say, okay, I'm Justin. I'm so happy. I'm almost, almost, I'm drowned to water. My friend, I found it, Justin. You talking to him? Dear, this is wonderful. Take a picture with Justin. Send me a picture of the two of you together, okay? It was a really joyous moment to actually hear somebody yell my name, and I asked, what his name was, he verified this was here. We went back and forth, and so you know, he was the guy. Those are the last people that I pulled out of the gate uh, after those three weeks. I went home that, uh, that morning. The shift usually ended about 6 a.m., 7 a.m. I tried to go to sleep at about 9 in the morning. Uh, and when I awoke, the, the IED had gone off. You know, the explosion had gone off. I cannot get to where you are. How do we...